next on Worcester News Tonight, we're in the 100 deadliest days for young drivers. Tonight, police weigh in on their effort to save lives. Plus, the surprise demolition of a skate park leaves some upset. The city says they're working to find a new location. But first tonight, Barry police are asking for the public's help after the town's senior center is broken into over the weekend. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. Police say there was property damage and a considerable amount of cash stolen from the center. They're looking to identify this suspect described as a middle-aged, heavy-set white male. And this vehicle, which police say appeared to be a light-colored 2005 or 2006 GMC Yukon with unknown registration. If you have any information, you're asked to contact the Barry De Police Department. It is one of the most dangerous times of the year for teenagers to be behind the wheel. According to AAA, the number of fatal crashes involving teens will see a near 15% increase during the summer. Tonight, we're hearing from police who are looking to combat this problem. Our Cam Jandro has the story. This was with a, uh, another distracted driver. Oxford police officer Kevin Mercier monitors traffic during rush hour Monday. He describes distracted driving as a high frequency problem, especially in younger drivers. They are Snapchatting, Facebooking, Instagram, um, all those things, and it's very hard for them to put, put, put those things down and just focus on driving. According to AAA, teen driver accidents will kill roughly 10 people daily from Memorial Day to Labor Day. It's known as the 100 deadliest days for teen drivers. Oxford police showed us these photos of recent accidents, highlighting the damage if drivers aren't paying attention behind the wheel or are operating under the influence. We don't want to make phone calls or knock on doors and tell a parent that their son or daughter has been injured or worse, been killed in a traffic crash. The Central Massachusetts Safety Council teaches thousands of young drivers every year. For instructor Gail Marie Erickson, advances made in vehicles have created problems in some ways. With technology being added to the cars, it's, I believe consumers are more interested in that. It opens the door to more distraction behind the wheel because it's almost the car truly is driving for itself. Erickson says there are numerous distractions she sees on a regular basis. Putting on cosmetics, shaving, um, putting on fingernail polish, um, even just horsing around in the car. Sunday was the halfway point of the 100 deadliest days. Officer Mercier hopes traffic signs and messages on social media can make the remaining time more safe. We'll never have zero accidents, but if, if that's our goal, um, that's something that we're going to do to try to reduce crashes, reduce injuries, and reduce deaths. Now tonight, Worcester police saying texting and driving played a major role in an accident on Grafton Street, a fatal accident where a 20-year-old woman was hit in the crosswalk and she later died. Anna. Thanks, Cam. The Worcester Middle School sports program will begin this year thanks to funds in the Worcester Public School System's 2019 fiscal budget. The $70,000 will help to get the program up and running. To keep the program thriving in the future, an advisory committee is looking into acquiring private money. The importance of, of engaging with the private sector um, is to ensure this continues to be a priority, not just a budget priority, um, but a priority for our community at large. Um, we haven't had middle school sports in many years. We know that it's a, it's a public safety um, issue, gives kids positive things to do um, in the afternoon. City Councilor Christian King says when he filed an order about a year and a half ago, one of the things requested was City Manager Ed Augustus work outside the school budget because the funding is limited. He says he hopes to see the private sector and business community step up. Another marijuana company is eyeing land in Charlton for a potential facility. Fourscore Holdings held a public meeting in the town Monday in hopes of hearing residents' questions and concerns. The meeting comes just a week after three Charlton residents filed a lawsuit against the Board of Selectmen for allegedly concealing negotiations with Valley Green Grow. Fourscore says this does not deter them. They're hoping to get their project out there and discuss the benefits to the community. We get from the public tonight, we'll, we'll take it all into consideration and hopefully we can come out with a better project at the end of it. 
put this here. Fourscore Holdings is unrelated to the other facility trying to move to Charlton. The company is trying to seek approval from Charlton's Board of Selectmen. Some city skateboarders are left without a place to skate. The city moved in without warning last week and started taking it apart. Now skaters say they're working with the city to come up with a new solution. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. You know, we say goodbye and it's, it's tough. An emotional few days for Warside skaters. The city demolished their DIY skate park under railroad bridges at the end of Washington Street with no warning. Skater John Powers says the skate park gave the canal district its hip factor. This is where it started and I'm really sure if you had never built a skate park here, there would not be a rising canal district. Nobody would be here looking to build a ballpark. The Warside family has been building and improving the park for more than 10 years. Crews were on scene today tearing down the park, the city citing public safety concerns. I was gutted, you know, it was heart wrenching. Longtime Warside member Chris Matthews says he got a text with a photo of bulldozers at the park and was emotional. We took the concrete blocks that we made for, for coping and, and kind of picked up the pieces of, of the skate park and, and ourselves mm -hmm. at the same time, I guess. The city met with skaters Monday. City manager Ed Augustus apologized and acknowledged there should have been better communication. The city says in a statement, city manager Augustus, Mayor Petty and Councillor Carlson have committed to working with members of the skate community to improve future communications and to identify a suitable site to rebuild the skate park. Matthews says the group is looking to rebuild, this time with the city's support. They seem to be in full support, and uh, I hope that they make right on it. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. A 19-year-old Rhode Island man is expected to be okay after being shot in the head over the weekend. Worcester police say a suspect fired bullets at a car on Hollywood Street. At least five gunshots were detected by the city's gunshot detection system. According to police, the victim arrived at the hospital saying he had been shot in the head but was uncooperative. The investigation is ongoing. The death of a Weymouth police officer hitting home for police departments across the state. Officers and legislators are hoping something will change to keep the people who fight for their communities safe. Our Rosalind Flaherty has more. People across the state are mourning the loss of Weymouth police officer Michael Chestnut. Officer Chesnell was killed in the line of duty Sunday morning. Your heart breaks for the community. Brings up all the same feelings all over again. The tragic news hitting especially hard for the Auburn Police Department. They lost one of their own two years ago. It's a mixture of, you know, profound sadness, but it's also, you know, a little bit of anger mixed in there too. According to court documents, the suspect, 20-year-old Emmanuel Lopes, hit Officer Chesna in the head with a rock. Lopes allegedly took Chesna's gun and fired shots into his head and chest. An elderly woman was also shot and killed. Auburn Detective Scott Mills says officers train for these situations, but losing an innocent person is difficult. We, you know, anticipate that there could possibly be a problem during our shift. We mentally prepare for that, hopefully physically prepare for that. Um, but, you know, for some innocent person just to be minding their own business and get shot in their own home. According to the Patriot Ledger, Lopes was charged in October for selling cocaine to minors and resisting arrest. State Representative Paul Frost was one of the key members in making assault and battery on a police officer a felony, but he says more steps need to be taken. Really, really have to take a solid look at this and say how can we improve the system, continue to push for, for stronger policies. Mills says he reached out to Weymouth Police after learning of the tragedy letting them know the Auburn Police Department is there for them. Unfortunately, now you've joined that, that uh, you know, brotherhood of, of sorts beyond the brotherhood that, you know, that we already have, and, and that's, you know, we're all in that, that sad fraternity, I guess, together where, you know, we do know what you're going through. We know what, not only what you're going through now, what you're gonna go through in the next week, and year, and two years even. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Officer Michael Chesna honored in a procession through his hometown. The solemn tribute went through the streets of Weymouth, past the police department, where Officer Chesna should have been celebrating his sixth anniversary on the force Monday. A growing memorial showing how the community has been touched by his death in the line of duty. One city councilor is looking to find a solution to prevent future drownings at Bell Pond. 
Earlier this month, divers pulled a 13 year old boy from the water who was swimming after lifeguards left for the day. He died a few hours later at the hospital. Councilor Candy Merrill Carlson is suggesting filling in the pond where a 12 foot drop is located. She's set to present this request at Tuesday's city council meeting.